native intelligence spans beyond the confines of generations. Through the teachers that taught us and those that taught them, we stand on the shoulders of giants and can therefore see new horizons. This is the Hawaiian tradition. From the Kumulipo to the Olelo no Eawa, I heed the wisdom from my ancestors and listen to ancient chants pass on through the winds of the Ko'olau and dance to the popular beats of the Ipu I, dance to the popular beats of the Pahu I, dance to the popular beats of Nakupuna. Their voices weave in and out like Lauhala, transcending space and time, finding new homes in the minds of my generation, the modern day Hawaiian, set forth in a course to perpetuate righteousness, to carry on our culture equipped with guitar strings, ukulele, bass drums, djembes, congas, breakbeats, microphones, turntables, and amplifiers. Let our voices be heard. We are the children, na pua o Hawaii, the humble link between our kupuna and eternity. We sing new songs with new traditions while maintaining our roots to the past because the blood coursing through these veins remains the same as that of our ancestors. We practice peace, love, unity, and respect just as they taught Apono, Aloha, Lokahi, and Ho'ihi. We are the 21st century Hawaiian. Stand strong on the shoulders of our past and look to the future with revolutionary eyes. Unite with purpose. We are Hawaiians. Set forth in a course to perpetuate righteousness. We are Hawaiians. Set forth in a course to carry on our culture. We are Hawaiians. Set forth in a course in the 21st century. We are Hawaiians of the 21st century. We are Hawaiians. Aloha, Mike Ako. How are you guys doing? <laughs> so, um, I thought I'd spend the bulk of this session, this talk, talking about um, the story of where we come from. And I thought I'd start off with the story of where I personally come from, which is technically, if you change a few of the details around the story of where um, Kako comes from. So, um, this is the story of us. You see, I come from a long line of impossibilities, a circumstance that happened to manifest because random chance allowed it to. My father has produced nearly 400 billion sperm cells in his lifetime. <laughs> it's true, I googled it. <laughs> <laughs> one of which happened to unite with one of the 500 eggs of my mother, which happened to develop into me. And when we calculate the probability of that specific sperm egg combination, the chances are roughly 200 trillion to one. Because had it been a different month, a different day, a different egg, a different sperm, the child would have been similar, but he or she would have been a completely different entity, ultimately different from me. And even deeper, what are the chances that my parents would have had a child in the first place? That they would have, could have fallen in love. That they would have, could have met within their lifetimes, within enough time to interact. I often wonder what brought them to make eye contact for the first time, leading to the next, and I don't have any of the answers, except to know that I vowed to never pass up an opportunity to look someone in their eyes. And those were just my parents, because before them were my grandparents, all four of their stories. And before them, there were eight. And before them, there were 16, 32, 64, exactly six generations ago, 64 individuals scattered around this world had completely separate intentions, their paths completely different from each other, aside from the convergence of a single point in the space-time continuum. Me. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, and my two brothers. <laughs> but I ask. Had my mother's grandparents not moved here from China, then she would have been one in a billion, speaking another tongue, living a parallel life that never existed. And had my father's grandmother not been conceived through a secret love affair between a strong Hawaiian woman and a mystery man who gave her her gray eyes and fair complexion, then the combination of Hawaiian, Caucasian, and Chinese that makes me, me, would never have had a chance to be conceived. And I ask, what are the chances that Polynesian voyagers would have could have found such a small landmass separated by thousands of miles of sea? What are the chances that James Cook and his crew would have, could have landed at Kealakukuo Bay after being stranded for days at sea. What are the chances that immigrants from Asian lands would take a chance on dreams and leave their countries for foreign borders to slave away on soils that bore fruits of possibilities? I don't, know, I don't have any of the answers. It's to know that I've vowed to never pass up an opportunity to understand someone else's culture. Because with seven billion people living in this world comes seven billion possibilities. That's seven billion points of wisdom to learn from. And what are the chances that the next person you meet could be the next Lilio Kolani? What are the chances that our own lives will amount to greatness? What are the chances that throughout our lives we'll touch others? What are the chances that the next idea we spawn could revolutionize the world? What are the chances? Because the fact that we're simply here means we've already beat our odds genetically, that we already come from a long line of impossibilities. I don't have any of the answers except to know that I've vowed to never stop striving to make something of my life 
life, because being the next person to do, to, do, to do something significant as one in a million, heck, one in a billion, that I'm willing to die trying, knowing that it was worth it, because with seven billion people living this unpredictable world, someone's got to be willing to take that chance. Right on. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's the story of where we come from, right? Or Ekalamai, that's the story of where I come from, because technically all of your stories are just a little bit different. You know, you come from different parents, different grandparents, different ancestors. But the question is, at what point in time do our stories actually converge into the same story? And to find the answer to that question, I'm looking around the room, I'm just to be safe, I'm saying we gotta go back hundreds of thousands of years back, trace the migrations of humans throughout the planet back to Africa where we first evolved into human, uh, modern day human, homo sapien. Um, and if you really wanna go extra credit and you know, go the extra mile, we can trace our story, singular, our story back to the evolution of life on this planet billions of years ago when we first emerged as single-celled organisms, right? Now as a scientist, um, I'm completely fascinated and have spent, um, you know, a bunch of time trying to understand the intricacies of evolution um, and how um, forces like mutation and natural selection have led us to evolve from single-celled organisms to slightly more complex forms. You know, those, those, those animals without spines. We're talking about the coral polyps and the worms and the starfish. And then we evolved into fish. And then from there, insects and amphibians. And from there, reptiles and birds and then mammals, which eventually led us all the way to us. I find that fascinating and beautiful. Now, as a Hawaiian growing up um, here, um, I can't help but smile at the clear parallel between the theory of evolution and our very own creation chant, the Kumulipo. You know, so the Kumulipo tells us that in the beginning was the darkness, and then from the sea slime uh, emerged the, the simple life forms, you know, the ones without the spines, the coral polyps, and the worms, and the starfish. And then after that came, was born the, the fish, and after that was born the reptiles, and the birds, and the mammals. And then after that was born us. Now as a poet and a storyteller, I've been working on um, various pieces that combine my scientific training with um, the stories, the mo'olelo that, I, you know, that I've heard my whole life, um, the traditional sources of knowledge, and seeing where the two worlds can dance together and, and play in symbiosis. Um, I brought some friends along with me. Um, I've got Taimane, Nia, and Jazz, and they're gonna help me out with a piece that we've been developing um, that, that walks the line between the theory of evolution and the kumulipo. It draws a little bit from both. And um, during this song, you'll hear various traditional songs from Hawaii, from the Native Americas, from Japan, all played over instruments with Mediterranean, European, and African-Peruvian um, histories. Uh, because in the end, we're all one people. You just got to go back far enough in time. Makako. <laughs> Singularity and the infinite, between fire and ice, between crust and sky, and the darkness of night was born life. Single-celled, like a single note, floating over the bass drum rumblings of the earth, birthed within the waters of her womb. And over time, those single-celled notes, they evolved to harmonies and chords. 
bending and dancing, swimming, then walking, flying and gliding from the sea to the land, from the land to the sky. And somewhere along the way, in the humid hot plains, evolved us. Nomadic and tribal, we roamed the earth, from the sweltering to the freezing, adapting and changing to suit our seasons. singular note in the jazz scale of life, united through the song of our breath. And though we speak in different tongues, we dream the same dreams, connected through our collective experience. Come out from your shelters, my children, feel the warmth of the sun. The time to come together has just begun. Hi.